Travers, ABC News, White House correspondent who is in charge of watching the three-ring circus known as the uh, White House. Good morning, Karen Travers. Good morning. Um, what is going on with these tweets? What's the backstory? What What is going on? He was had nothing to do over the holidays, so now he's back with a vengeance? <laughs> if I were to hazard a guess as to why, I would not probably be right. But, I mean, the, the president tweeted to end the new year, and he tweeted to start, or to end 2017, and he's tweeting to start 2018. Not surprising. It's what he does. Uh, certainly, though, seemed to be raring and eager to go yesterday, tweeting in the morning, throughout the day, and then last night, which, you know, we don't usually get to see some late evening tweets. He tends to do it all uh, before the workday ends. But that tweet about Kim Jong-un coming on 8 o'clock last night and certainly had uh, the Washington establishment, at least through the social media chattering class, a little bit concerned about the cavalier nature of tweeting something so critical as a nuclear weapons threat. Uh, any reaction from Republicans? It's pretty extraordinary to have a president, as you say, so cavalier mm-hmm. in re- referencing uh, the atomic bomb. Yeah, I mean, not yet, but certainly that's going to be a big question asked today. The Senate is back in town. Some Republican House leaders are back. House is officially not back until next week. But, you know, this is something we've uh, seen many times in the past. The president tweets something about issue A, B, C, whatever, and then congressional leaders are asked to respond to issue A, B, C, whatever. And for the most part, they don't. Uh, they tend to defer and say they hadn't seen it or it's just a tweet. Uh, it, it, that's been kind of the M.O. for Republican leadership over the last year. Yeah. Now, we should say that this tweet that President Trump had about the nuclear button was a reaction to what the leader of North Korea said. This wasn't sort of on his own. This was a sort of reaction. So it wasn't that Trump was ratcheting up the rhetoric. Mm -hmm. This was a response to someone else ratcheting up the rhetoric. Right. But it is the president ratcheting up the rhetoric when it's the United States who is now threatening and and matching uh, a North Korean dictator who, you know, the the world uh, sense is, is that kind of thrives on power and thrives on the perception of um, the ability to have this massive impact around the world. The president, the Kim Jong-un's tweet said, you know, the whole territory of the U.S. is within the range of our nuclear strike. And, you know, in previous administrations, you would just expect language like that to go either unresponded to or with that diplomatic talk that we often hear and said the president fires back with his own threat. Now, I think it's also worth noting, and you can Google and read some very in-depth articles that have, of course, been uh, revisited in the last 24 hours, but that there isn't a physical button in the Oval Office. There's a very complex process to ordering and carrying out a nuclear strike from the U.S. Uh, the president, of course, that has that nuclear football carried by military officers Everywhere he is, the codes that the president has would be transmitted to the Pentagon to uh, enact a launch order. So it's it's not as simplistic as just buttons. Yeah. Uh, lots of talk, lots of tweets, uh, Karen Travers. Any actual work getting done in Washington? Today, the president is dispatching top aides to Capitol Hill uh, to meet with congressional leaders, the Republicans, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, and Democrats uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. They're talking about the broader legislative agenda for 2018, but also uh, the issue of government spending. They've got a big deadline of January 19th to fund the government, and this is where they're going to have to hammer out that big controversy over spending limits and and raising caps and raising uh, spending rates for military, domestic issues, which is the Democrats' priority right now. They punted on all of this in December. They kept the government operating by just passing short-term bills. This is now where they're really going to have to get down to the nitty-gritty. And what? The the government runs out of money again? What? January January 19th. January 19th. And then where is DACA in all of this? This is in there as well. Democrats want that to be a part of this debate, and they think they have leverage, and there's certainly indications are that they do have leverage because they're going to be needed uh, to get this across the finish line, especially in the Senate. And uh, they want to have a a big voice at the table on this. The president, uh, the White House says the president has made it clear that there will be no legislation legislative fix for DACA unless there is also um, address also paid attention to uh, money for the border wall, a beefed up security, an end to chain migration, and a revamping of the visa lottery process. So the president playing hardball right back. Lots going on. Karen Travers, ABC News correspondent at the White House. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Six